it says the brake pads are worn down but how do you know if you need to change pads and discs now maybe your car doesn't tell you you need brake pads and you can just hear them screeching so in this video i'm going to show you how you can discern whether you need to change the disc as well as the pad now you'll need to get the wheel off so you can inspect the disc so that means you need to jack up your car whenever you're jacking up your car you must make sure you chock the wheels so even though you've got the handbrake on you see those two bricks there preferably if you've even got bigger ones on all the wheels except the wheel that you're going to be lifting make sure that the car cannot move when you're jacking it up and I'm just going to loosen the bolts I'm not going to pull them out I'm just loosening them so that when I jack up the car I'll be able to loosen them completely remember that some cars when you jack it up it's very difficult to loosen them because the wheel turn so you're loosening it while it's still got the friction of the ground right now I can jack it up every car is different but there's usually a spot over here where you can attach your jack to While I'm not getting under the car directly, it's always good practice to use a trestle just in case the jack fails. Make sure the trestle is under a mounting point on the car, so that point must be able to hold the entire car's weight. Now you can remove the wheel. Right, now you can see that the uh, pad is fairly worn, but the question is, is do you need to replace this disc and how do you tell if you need to replace it? And that is what I'm going to show you now. Now you can see there's this writing on the side here, and I've just taken a cloth with some lacquer thinners on, or uh, enamel thinners, or any type of cleaning product, and I'm just making sure I can read this. Now this writing might not be here, it might be written over here and you might even see a little arrow on the disc itself now in my case it happens to be lower down so I'll just show you what it says here now what it says it says min thickness 22.4 millimeters so that is the minimum thickness that the disc is allowed to be before you need to replace it now wh where you measure this is over here so they're saying that this thickness here mustn't be less than 22.4 millimeters now that means you'll need to measure it so if you've got a digital vernier that will work and if you've got a regular one it's also fine all right so you can see mine is 24.8 so it would pass now this is where it gets analytical but there's a little lip here and that changes things considerably because when i measured it i measured it here but actually you need to get the mating surface see there's the pad and where the pad touches the disc so what we have to do is we have to account for this little lip here now on some cars you'll find this is quite excessive you might even find it's one and a half millimeters now if this was one and a half millimeters each side this disc would not pass the minimum thickness test so it's quite hard to measure that so what you could do is you can use the back of the vernier and you can see there's a little pin that comes out there and you can work out like if you have a look at that you can put the pin there on the flat part and then let it go down and you can see that gap there see that gap if you have a look you can see there it's about 0.5 millimeters this little lip here is actually adding 0.5 and it's probably 0.5 on the other side so that equals one millimeter so that original measurement i took now needs to be derated by one millimeter because that lip accounts for 0.5 millimeters each side so i have to remove 0 0.5 0 0.5 i'll just show you where the error creeps in here if you have a look this is a this is a thick piece of cardboard and as you can see i can insert it there look at that so that's that half a millimeter because of this lip and this isn't even that bad on most cars especially when it's time to replace pads you'll find that this might even be one and a half millimeters so you've got to make sure you get this thickness rather than this thickness 
Now the next thing is to inspect the disc. Is it even across the face of this disc? Sometimes you'll find that it's rough. It's almost got like crevices. And then you'd have to do something called skimming it. That is taking the disc off, putting it on a lathe and taking a small or a light layer off, a very thin layer off here in order to make it completely flat. In this case, this disc is actually still good. If I go across it like this, it's pretty smooth. And the lip that's over here is still acceptable. I wouldn't need to put this on a lathe as yet. Right, just having a look at a more extreme case, this minimum thickness is 28.4. Now let's have a look at this disc. Already you can see this lip much thicker. This is easily a millimeter. Pretty recessed here and then this high lip here so let's measure it now one of the problems is most verniers don't have a groove you see there it's too narrow while this one here i've actually cut that in if you look there i've actually created that groove but a lot of verniers don't have it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to get around that problem uh, if you haven't got a groove cut in there you see there that groove allows me to measure the inner thickness there's no point measuring the outer thickness we need to measure the inner thickness so that grooves allows me to measure it but unfortunately uh, most verniers don't have it so what you'll end up doing is you'll measure the total width like that and then you'll have to account for that gap there and on the other side so I'll just quickly show you how to do that so you can see that's about 29.6 right so you take the 29.6 and now we've got to subtract that. Right, so I take the 29.6 minus... that. 1.68. 1.68 minus on this side how much it's worn on the back usually it would be similar but it's not necessarily it's not necessarily always the same look at that 2.01 so i'm at 25.9 and recall that the minimum thickness was 28.4 so actually this disc is now finished needs to be removed and a brand new disc needs to be put on because 25.9 even if you call that 26 is way out of the range of 28.4 time for a new disc right just a tip don't be fooled by this lip for example just because there's a lip doesn't always mean you need to replace the disc like i show already showed you the disc on the back of the car is still fine now sometimes people take the disc and get it skimmed and it looks brand new there's no lip there's no uh, groove it's completely flat but when you measure it it's too little it's uh, way thinner than the minimum thickness and you still need to replace the disc even though it's been skimmed and prepared nicely the reason why there's a minimum thickness has got to do with heat dissipation and also is linked to the different climates this car is in a hot climate area which means that it needs to dissipate a lot of heat this particular disc is for a hot climate installation meaning that this car is uh, either manufactured for or uh, used in a country where the climate is hot meaning that the disc has to dissipate a certain amount of heat now even if you're in a cold climate condition they will still have the minimum thickness but why this is important it's got to do with heat dissipation if you if you do not follow this minimum thickness you run the risk of firstly uh, wearing out your brake pads very quickly also the disc heats up a lot so you get a lot more heat here and obviously more heat means more evaporation of your brake fluid so the whole system is then put under additional stress my advice is do not uh, disregard this minimum thickness particularly if you live in hot climate areas your braking will be severely affected uh, because it cannot dissipate the heat fast enough that's why the thicker the disc it stops the little hot spots that get form on the face here and the disc can work more efficiently right just wanted to show you a few images of some worn discs here you can see there's the lip and there's the other lip and you can see how the wear is totally um, unacceptable you can see that these hot spots are formed and it's literally breaking through to the air gap so this is very dangerous uh, have a look at this uh, disc over here high gap here um, another high gap here so this is very worn and look how rough the face is
totally worn through look at that um, this is exceptionally dangerous uh, you can see this is the crevices that i'm talking about if you see any indentations or lines on the disc like this you should get it skimmed or consider replacing them uh, cracks obviously any cracks you need to replace the disc it's finished and there one last one you can see part of the disc come off um, this is where very very thin it becomes brittle right if you're looking to replace your disc or if you require additional information about your disc you can contact the manufacturer of your car or you can look at third party people who make parts for your vehicle now here i have one company this is called ate uh, they make parts you can go and look at their uh, catalog um, then you'll get all the details this happens to be of the pads the sizing then you can also look at another manufacturer this one happens to be called alpha they'll just want your details and yeah i've just done a search i see there there's bmw this is my year and here you can see it gives you the diameter um, the thickness the minimum thickness there you can see the thickness it says 24 and here the minimum 22 you can see there isn't much in it it's only two millimeters between brand new and time for replacement here i'm looking at ferrodo i've located the disc there you can see 24 millimeters the number of holes bmw five holes and so forth so you can also get the specs online and uh, compare to what you've currently got on the vehicle to make sure you got the right thing all right so thanks for watching and cheers